We have with us Amr Singh and Ashish Chitramuta both joining in with their top trading picks. Amr, I'll come to you first. Uh, what is the trade on the Nifty? Yeah, overall, uh, looking at uh, Nifty, what we are seeing is that uh, Nifty seems to uh, find a bottom and also the volatility that we were witnessing earlier, uh, that has somewhat uh, subsided over the last uh, a uh, few trading sessions but it's still uh, tied in a very uh, i would say narrow range because uh, if you look at the major support level for nifty it's uh, uh, 10380 10400 that's a very strong support zone for nifty whereas on the upside uh, what we witnessed yesterday was again some selling pressure coming at higher levels so so nifty is on the upside cap towards uh, 10600 to 620 25 that's a very strong resistance zone for nifty uh, technically, on the charts, I would say the short-term charts still are, uh, I would say, extremely bearish. Uh, they are in oversold territory. That's the reason we are seeing some pullback. Uh, the medium-term uh, charts have also now started displaying some uh, negative bias. The long-term charts, they continue to remain uh, positive. So that's one, I would say, saving grace. So what's likely to happen is that higher levels, again, they're going to meet with selling pressure because still uh, Nifty doesn't consistently trade or close above 10,650, uh, 60 on a consistently basis we'll see uh, a selling pressure uh, uh, nifty whereas on the downside as i said uh, immediate support is uh, around 10380 400 and crucial support for nifty comes around 10250 260 that's a very very crucial and important support level for nifty right index i don't think you can make any money trading at an index level or across stocks because it's just about buying quality names uh, and the timing is uh, of course what is going to be extremely tough Amar, do you think uh, a lot of the smart money will now move to the large cap names because while broader markets were showing signs of resilience for the last couple of days yesterday's sell-off i'm assuming has made uh, traders nervous once again uh, if the smart money is chasing large cap names, then maybe the idea remains that it's probably best off to start looking at trading some of those large cap uh, metal names, oil related stocks, the likes of an RIL, maybe even large cap IT stocks. Yeah, I think you, uh, you are right there because uh, uh, what we are seeing is that uh, uh, technically, definitely the markets, as I said, that we are witnessing some uh, correction there and some profit booking at uh, the, mo the moment the market moves higher, that's one. Secondly, uh, the PNB issue also, how it really uh, pans out and how does it impact overall the banking PSU sector, that's again something which could have some impact and maybe there's more to come, so that also the markets would factor in. Globally also what we are seeing is that uh, even in the US markets and the European markets and as well as Asian markets, we are seeing some fair amount of volatility. The, the earlier trend which was there, that a one-sided uptrend was there, that we are not seeing. So we are seeing some very high level of volatility. So that also traders and investors would keep into mind. And yes, being uh, into the defensive uh, mindset right now makes more sense and getting into large caps makes more sense. And as you said, the IT sector, uh, I would say large cap IT sector, that could be one of those defensive areas. Uh, Infosys is a stock, if you look at it, technically it's, uh, I would say, positive on the stock. So, so some of these stocks, they would uh, witness some fair amount of buying till there is some settling down in the markets or some clarity as to, I would say, uh, some of the issues that are uh, currently impacting the market. Right. Uh, so again, those are basically, that is actually a very important factor, U.S. yields here. Amar, coming to you. Now, there were actually very good moves uh, in uh, one of the stocks like Aptek again. The first part of this week, again, the stock was actually moving higher. Now then, again, there was slight cool off here around the key support levels right now. So basically, what should one do right now once the Aptek stock has slightly corrected here? And number two, again, uh, how you're looking at uh, stocks like Apollo Hospitals, Power Grid, uh, stocks again which have slightly less correlation with the index movement here but again uh, good sort of brokerage commentaries around the Apollo hospitals power grid also basically uh, has been seeing good move here so what's the trade right now on all of these stocks yeah as far as uh, power grid is concerned that's one of the stocks that i'm uh, recommending today for a buy uh, because uh, the uh, the stock is uh, is uh, positive on the short term charts as well as the medium ta medium term charts if you look at uh, a power grid that's in oversold territory whereas the long term charts are neutral so clearly reflecting that there is some short term buying interest which has come in in power grid uh, so any pullback towards uh, 195 uh, can be used as a buying opportunity and uh, with a stop loss of 192 and a target of uh, 201 because the, the stock, as I said, short term, the trend has uh, turned positive and also it's formed a, a very strong uh, bottom somewhere around 190 levels. 
Uh, coming to the next talk, which you talked about, Apollo Hospitals. Apollo Hospitals also what we are seeing is that uh, uh, the medium term trend remains extremely positive for this stock. The short term trend, yes, it is uh, on the verge of a breakout if you look at the levels. Uh, so I would say 1220 to, uh, to 1230, that's a very strong uh, resistance zone for this stock. If that's taken out, then the stock is headed higher towards uh, 1240, 42 levels, which was its 18th December high. So clearly what it means is that the stock uh, is in a, and, and the short term trend definitely is positive. It's formed a, a bullish divergence on the charts. So clearly reflecting that the stock has formed uh, some bottom. On the long term charts, if I'm looking at the long term charts, then definitely 1240, 1250, that's going to be a level to watch out for. If that level is taken out, then then this stock is definitely headed higher and it could uh, head higher towards uh, 1280, 1300 levels. So I would say that yes, any pullback in this stock can be used as a buying opportunity. Welcome back. Uh, about five minutes to go as we gear up for trade this morning. Amar, you want to give us your stock picks for the day? Any short trades, long trades, option strategies that one can consider uh, executing? Yeah, uh, the, there are a couple of strategies I would uh, like to give. Uh, one is uh, uh, Coal India. Uh, that's a buy on Coal uh, India because uh, what we're seeing in Coal India is that uh, uh, technically this stock is uh, positive across all time frames. And uh, also if we look at the stock has uh, is uh, showing some positive uh, movement in spite of what we've seen in the market, uh, the turmoil that we witnessed in the market. So any pullback uh, uh, towards 304 in Coal India can be used as a buying opportunity. Uh, with a stop loss of uh, 297 and a target of 317 uh, on the upside. The second uh, uh, stock that uh, one can look at again from a buying perspective is Gale. Uh, what we are seeing is that uh, the stock has formed a bottom, a very strong bottom somewhere around 450 uh, levels or so. And uh, technically on the charts, uh, uh, the short term as well as the long term is, is it remains positive, however the medium term trend remains neutral. So what it effectively means is that the, market, the stock is resilient to what all is happening in the market and uh, it is forming, it has formed a very strong base. So any pullback, it's currently around 470, 475 levels. So any pullback towards 468, that can be initiated as a buying opportunity uh, with a stop loss of uh, 461 and a target of 483. And the third, as I talked about earlier, was power grid. That's very strong across all time frames and uh, technically strong on the charts. So any pullback towards uh, 195 can be used as a buying opportunity with a stop loss of uh, 192 and a target of 201. You would sort of uh, trade, you've already told us uh, stocks that you like, but metals uh, this morning are shining out once again, a 3% across the board gain from a Hindalco, Tata Steel, Vedanta. Uh, do these levels look attractive to buy for the next few days maybe? Uh, looking at the metal stocks, yes, uh, what we are seeing in the metal stocks is uh, the metal stocks have bounced back from the recent lows. Uh, but technically what we are seeing is on the charts, uh, there is some very strong resistance and uh, uh, the long term charts, yes, they are positive, they are strong. So that's the reason we are seeing this bounce back uh, because on daily charts they were in oversold territory. But what we are seeing on the medium term trend is that uh, the stocks are going to meet with very strong resistance. If I'm talking about Tata Steel. Uh, somewhere around uh, 735, 740, that's uh, going to be a very strong resistance uh, for Tata Steel because and even if you look at uh, Vedanta in particular, uh, what's happening in Vedanta is that uh, uh, upside I had earlier uh, talked about 340 and 350 levels, that's going to act as a very strong uh, uh, resistance uh, uh, for the stock. So yes, for short term play one can buy but one shouldn't really expect the stock uh, to uh, significantly rally till we uh, on the Vedanta that level is going to be around 340, 350 till that level is taken out. Uh, the stock will uh, will witness uh, some amount of uh, profit booking. As far as Tata Steel is concerned again 730, 740 that's a very strong zone. Currently it's around 78, 710 so yes there can be some buying opportunity but one needs to remember that these are trading ideas for the moment yes, they are not for buying and holding for a long term at least at these levels. Right. So that Engineering. Uh, I was uh, talking to a couple of traders uh, last evening and they were quite bullish uh, on this uh, counter. Uh, do you have a view on this stock? If you could just come again, which stock? Vascon Engineering.
Uh, no, I'm not able to get this. Uh, all right, uh, unable to get that one. But uh, talk to us uh, about a couple of uh, other stocks that are on the move uh, this morning. Uh, again, I'm going to throw a few uh, smaller names at you, but KC International seeing some traction uh, right now. How does that look to you? And uh, between GVK and GMR, do you see a trade in either of them? They've been very, very volatile, as has been the case in the broader markets in general in any case. Yeah, first I'll talk about KC International. KC International definitely, it's uh, if I'm looking at the charts, the charts are extremely strong from a long-term perspective as well as a medium-term perspective. The stock uh, did witness some correction towards uh, 320 levels and uh, even if I'm looking at the medium-term trend, that also remains very strong. Uh, so uh, so this uh, is, and it's broken out, uh, it's, uh, it, has, uh, uh, it was meeting with resistance around 385, 390, that was a very strong resistance zone for the stock. And the stock has taken out uh, uh, this level. So clearly reflecting that this stock is in for some uh, further uh, rally and uh, any uh, pullback because the stock now has very strong support somewhere around 385, 390. So uh, the stop loss needs to be below uh, 385 levels and uh, the targets on the higher side could be towards uh, 430, 35 on the upside. The next stock uh, you talked about GMR. So in case of uh, uh, GMR infra, what we are seeing is that uh, uh, the stock uh, is trading sideways, currently it's around uh, 19 levels or so and uh, technically long term it's uh, positive on the charts but the short term I would say it's more or less uh, range bound whereas on the downside we have strong support coming around 18 levels or so. So I would say that this is a stock uh, which uh, if you have to compare between uh, KEC and uh, GMR Infra I would say uh, technically uh, I'm talking about. Uh, then KEC is anytime a far better opportunity. G GMR is more or less stay away from this stock, at least for the current moment. Amar, uh, do you track Arcom? Uh, I mean, I know it's a very volatile stock, but this morning it's uh, up very sharply. The FNO activity is uh, also looking pretty healthy. On Arcom for an intraday position, uh, would you buy it? And also, idea, how is that one looking? Because right now it's underperforming Arcom in terms of trading activity. Yeah, Arcom, what we're seeing is that the stock had rallied and currently if you look at the last uh, few trading sessions, I'm talking about 15, 20 trading sessions, it seems to be caught in a range between 22, 23 on the downside and somewhere around uh, 30, 31 on the upside. Uh, so uh, as far as technically on the charts, yes, uh, it is positive on the long term as well as the medium term trend. Short term is also looking positive. So uh, ideally, uh, breaching the uh, 30 levels, then the stock can trade higher towards 34, 35 levels. So if one wishes to buy, then one should uh, wait for a breach above 30 level. As far as idea is concerned, uh, what we are seeing in idea is uh, uh, that uh, this stock, uh, if you look at uh, technically, I would say that uh, the stock is trying to form a bottom. It did form a bottom few days back. Uh, so the support level for uh, idea is somewhere very strong around 80 levels or so. Uh, but technically, it's not inspiring too much of confidence because uh, uh, from a medium term perspective, the, the trend remains uh, down. From a long term perspective, the trend remains uh, sideways uh, with a negative bias. Uh, short term, what's happening is that uh, the stock has been in uh, oversold territory. So it's trying to bounce back. But on the upside, uh, it will meet with somewhere very strong resistance around 84, 50, 85 levels. But again, that could be some uh, selling uh, opportunity. So it would be more or less range play in idea, I would say, on the upside. Uh, Till the time the stock doesn't consistently trade above 87, 88 levels, we'll see fresh uh, selling coming in the stock. And the downside, yes, uh, 80 seems to be a very strong support. So it's going to be a range play for idea in the short term. Well, uh, with that, we're completely out of time. Sanjeev, uh, Amar and Ashish, uh, always a pleasure having all of you. Thanks for joining in. Uh, have a good weekend and we'll see you next week. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll put the focus on PSU Banks. Stay tuned.